I just feel like everything is like beep, beep. I'm confused to be honest. Where is the climax? The interesting part comes later. <laughs> Hello, dear friend. It's been a while, but we're here. We've arrived at the end and very final act of the story. It's been an emotional journey, but we're about to make it all worth it. Treat yourself for having come this far and know that the story can only get better from here on. Act 3 is typically not the one I have the hardest time getting down, but it's often the most intense and demanding of me. Every time I think about it, any scene within it, it gets a little harder to breathe. It's both easy and difficult to get through it, and I both want it to be fast and to never end. But enough of the emotional roller coaster. Let's try to make some sense of this section of the story. So, how are we entering the third act? Through the break into three, of course, because we've been mostly using save the cat terms to refer to different points of story structure. So, what happens here? After a moment of complete loss and despair, comes a shiny beam of light and the protagonist finally realizes what they have to do to fix the story's main conflict, as well as all of the mess they themselves have created while trying to solve the conflict the wrong way. My break into three is complicated, to say the least. I love it a lot in the sense that it's the final realization. My protagonist is finally learning the theme of the story. Uh, and in that sense, I really like it. But the moment he realizes this, things get complicated again. And for a while, I really struggled with that in Act 3 because, you know, once the protagonist learns the theme, we think. Okay, now they can just do the right thing and everything will be fine. But, of course, not everything can be fine or else there would be no Act 3. So, yeah. <laughs> From here on, it was really fun to just come up with the things that had to happen. And I already knew what was going to happen since I outlined Act 1 because I had to figure out what happened in the end in order to have a breakthrough in Act 1. Uh, but now that I'm finally here and I have arrived at this section of the story, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm confused, to be honest. Luckily, the break into 3 is only one scene, so... That was easy to get down. The interesting part comes later. I think the third act is the one that varies the most from story structure to story structure, which I believe is indicative of how much it depends on the story you've told so far and what your point for it was all along. A lot of times the ending will make or break a story, I've read books which were 3 stars until I got to the end, which raised them to 4. And books which were 5 stars until the ending lowered them to 4. While the ending is not necessarily what people will remember best from the book, again, it depends on the story you're telling, it still has a significant impact on the strength of the story. By the end of Act 2, we writers have already been through a lot, so the least we can do for ourselves and our writing is to make the ending a place we will always want to arrive at, even if, realistically, it's not that good of a place. 
Okay, so I analyzed a lot of different story structures in order to come up with the ideal act 3 for my story and it was really weird because it felt like none of them really fit what I wanted for the third act because I feel like a lot of third acts are really like fast paced and while I do want my third act to be intense and uh, you know to put the reader on the edge I don't really see it as something that goes by like like this and of course a lot of times we hear that the third act should be like a ticking clock but that only fits in my story for part of the third act because uh, <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers but basically none of the structures was really perfect for the story I want to tell but I did end up following mostly the save the cat finale with five points so the first point is gathering the team then executing the plan then the high tower surprise dig deep down execution of the new plan and that's where this structure stopped fitting my story because uh okay <laughs> I just, I don't want to spoil anything. Basically, even the Save the Cat beat sheet didn't fit <laughs> for my third act. But I'm just so, I feel very strongly about the idea that I have for this third act. And as of right now, I think this is the idea I want to go with. Like, I really, really like it. And I think readers would really really like it so you know unless someone tells me like no it it really doesn't work i'm just gonna keep it like this and so this bit of the story the finale i'm dividing it into not five points but kind of four points and what's really interesting about having different points of view is that each of these points is not happening to each of the characters like in the beginning I had a lot of beats in different timelines match but right now they're kind of missing each other and that also creates conflict uh, another thing that's really interesting and which I mentioned in outlining act one is that I still don't know <laughs> where the climax is like I look at my final act and I'm like there are so many mini climaxes mini cliffhangers and plot twists and mini explosions not literally but I just feel like everything is like pip, pip, pip. <laughs> uh. I, I, I don't know where is the climax okay so if I had to guess the climax is the final resolution I know that some story structures see like climax resolution or some some even do resolution first climax after like uh, it's just confusing to me and I'm here like the climax is the resolution, the resolution is the climax, like this is the moment the whole story was, you know, moving towards. I guess I do know what the climax is, uh, it just doesn't really make sense in my mind, but in terms of emotions, I know what the climax is. In terms of story structure, um, I just hope. <laughs> I, I hope it fits. <laughs> I think this third act is the perfect example of how you don't always have to follow story structure because sometimes sometimes you just know how things go. At least like that's how I feel about this third act. Like everything feels very fitting 
like I just think this is how things have to go and I think readers will like it like I'm really happy about it if I read this in a book I would be like ah. <laughs> hey. okay I'll stop rambling now The final image is the moment the whole book was moving towards. It shows how far the protagonist has come, how much they've changed, how much they've learned. I was about to say that it doesn't have to be a happy ending, but it's a good idea to make it satisfying, but actually I've enjoyed unsatisfying endings before, and many people do too. So just do what feels right to you. Alright, and so we have reached the very last scene of the story, the final image and what can I say about this final image? I just... I think when I write it I'm gonna be... I don't know... I feel like this is the kind of final image that will make you want to go back to the beginning and start reading the book all over again at, at least like I really hope that's... <laughs> The reaction or like I don't know I just feel like if I was reading this book that's that's how I would feel like I wouldn't want it to be over and I would be like no <laughs> and crying yeah I just I don't know I'm just so happy with this story it's been so long since I've come up with a story idea that actually makes me I've come up with a lot of story ideas that I think are good, but none of them hit me the way <laughs> this one is hitting me. Like, I'm so happy I've decided to write this story, you know, at this moment in my life. It's just, yeah. And now we have arrived at the end of Act 3, the outline. And the good thing is, now we can go back to the beginning and start draft zero. Um, am I excited? I'm really excited. And also a little bit scared because, you know, from this moment on, every scene will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more and more detailed. And yeah. Now that we've arrived at the end of the outline, I'd like to remind you that being a writer is a lot about following your instinct. If you're a good writer, and being a good writer often comes with practice, which means it comes with failure, so don't be afraid to experiment. But if you're a good writer, you'll know how to end the story, and it will be the right way. So practice trusting your gut. It's worth it, I promise. And if you're not so sure, seek feedback. Writing can be lonely, but it doesn't have to be. Not all the time, anyways. Asking for help isn't making the story less you, it's just making the story stronger, from different perspectives. Alright, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me and for being part of this journey. I hope to see you in the comment section and in my next video. Bye!